Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. It's a Barbie world, and I'm a Barbie girl. A look at the new Barbie movie trailer. Then, it's the story of the creation of the Air Jordan. But does Air take flight? We saw it, and we'll have our review. And what you reading? Kendall is back with her latest book club pick. The Jason Show starts right now. Here we go. That's making a good day. Let's do a tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. We oh. do it our <laughs> I did not do that. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. And welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. How you doing, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Keep that love going. It's time to say hello to Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. Hello, hello. Kendall. Hello. 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 You have any coffee today or anything, my friend? Nothing Well, I, I actually brought my water bottle in, but it's the wrong water bottle. Oh, I'm sorry it's about the that. It's Fox 9. Oh, it's not the Jason Wake Show up one? with Fox 9. Oh, one. it's fine. It's, it's the same Jason. station. You can go. You, I don't care. <laughs> it's just a water bottle, for heaven's sake. He doesn't care. I mean, unless it has, like, the Twin Cities Live logo on it. I don't care. It does. You know I mean? On the like, other side. <laughs> yeah. The, like, if you have a picture of Elizabeth, I wouldn't care. But, yeah. Anyway, how are you doing? I'm, I'm tired, but I'm good. Are you tired? A little bit, yeah. Kendall, you know, Kendall wakes up even earlier than I do, but... Uh, we stayed out a little past our bedtime yesterday. Uh, we'll explain. Uh, <laughs> we, we went to go see a movie that we'll review a little bit later, uh, which, by the way, there's a, a woman in the audience. Uh, I won't point her out, but she's in the second row. But she, um, I, I, I teased this earlier. I teased earlier that I, we were going to review Air, and mm -hmm. she goes, almost quoting, she goes, I, I don't want to wait. I want the review right now. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, well, yeah. She's like, right there she is. That's her. Yeah. <laughs> And I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I'm a smart, smart earth. She gives it right back to me. I deserve it. I love it. So, so you know what? Today. So I'm in the commercial break. <laughs> she does not. She does not want to be on TV now. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna in the <laughs> in the commercial break. I'm gonna go over, sit next to her, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna just personally give her the give review. Her a personal That's right. Yeah. Review. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what are you? I mean. She, it's like, what is she in, in, is she in the witness protection program? <laughs> this is, let me tell you, this is one of those audiences that I love. It's like coming to work and Aaron, Aaron Schwaberini said this, they make our job so easy. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're a lot of fun today. They're a blast. <laughs> Especially Jackie Onassis over there. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yesterday, so we did go, we did go see that we did go see air mm -hmm. and we don't see each other just because of our schedules. We don't see each other a lot socially. We right. do hang out. We all, right. we are, all of us are actually legitimate friends, mm -hmm. but it was great seeing you. I almost didn't go to the movie and the coordinator said, oh, wait a minute. Kendall's going to be here uh -huh. and Alexis from my radio show is going to mm -hmm. be here and Holly from the radio show. And I was like, oh, well, and I'm not going to leave now. Right. So you and I, we, we all sat together. We too. all sat next to each other. <laughs> and I got to tell I got to tell you, I loved sitting next to you. Uh, your husband, though, uh, he's a talker during movies. <laughs> uh, yes, not. he is not. OK, he just asked if our food was ready one time because we had ordered on the app because the line was really long. And then another time, we got really excited because one of the actors that's in the movie was in the movie. And then the third time, it was more like, I want those shoes so bad. And then the fourth and fifth time, what were those about? <laughs> he was whispering no, to me. He I, was just got a loud voice. I love jo Jordan. Her husband, I, he's, he's so one nice. of my favorite <laughs> humans is sitting, sitting next to him. And speaking of favorite humans, I got to say, today uh, is my husband's birthday. Yay! It's Colin's birthday today. There we are right there. There we are uh, in our, nat our, our natural habitat cocktailing uh, right there. That's, uh, that's enjoying, oh, what is, oh, 
Guys, that was, we had, that was a fabulous espresso martini that day. That was, yeah, quite lovely. But, yeah, there we are. Happy birthday, Kyle, with his curly hair. Uh, happy 27th. Happy, yeah, yeah. He just, he's, not, he's not 27 there, smart Alec. No, but, yeah. that's a compliment. Yeah. He looks like he's 27. He does look, but anyway, I love you. Uh, he's a great, he, one of the best human beings I've ever met. Uh, he puts up with me. He puts up with the nonsense that comes with the job. And uh, he has the patience of a saint. He does. So yeah, we're gonna have a, we're gonna go on. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And so is your husband. They look good. Yeah, our husbands put up with a lot, don't they? <laughs> they, really they sure do. do. <laughs> and we appreciate you. Uh -huh. uh, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Yay! Let's get going. <laughs> The trailer for the new Barbie movie dropped yesterday and the internet is still recovering. Look at this. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Ugh. Hi, Ken. I can. Put the radio fast and goes cruising just as fast as she can now. I thought I might stay over tonight. Why? Because we're girlfriend boyfriend. To do what? I'm actually not sure. It looks so, like look at all the people, look at that list. Look at all the people in that. Uh, this is, he pulls out his roller blades. This is great. Ken pulls out his roller blades right about here. Did you bring your roller blades? Boom, right there, yeah. Um, this looks, you know, you're thinking to yourself, how are they gonna do a Barbie movie? I, this looks real inventive. So Margot Robbie as one of the Barbies, the main Barbie. Uh, Ken Gosling is main Ken, but the cast, uh, America Ferreira from Ugly Betty, Will Ferrell, Helen Mirren, uh, Simu Lee is one of the Kens. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait for this. this looks I can't so wait. Good. And this looks fun. So fun. Goofy. And I love that Ken is like very flippant and like, ah, yeah. I don't know. A little dumb. <laughs> Ken's a little, little, a little I mean, dumb. a little, so little funny. elevator doesn't stop on the top floor. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. We both loved the part too where she takes off her shoes because if you ever owned a Barbie doll, that's how the feet, feet never are. go down. It's always yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Jackie like, Onassis, how does it look? <laughs> God, I love her. I love her so much. Anyway, uh, Barbie hits theaters in July. Now, we're not done with the Barbie stuff, so you might have seen this on your socials yesterday. Whoever the marketing team is at Warner Brothers Barbie, y'all did a great job because the Barbie generator is all over the place and it's letting you create your own Barbie profile. Their takeoffs of the Barbie profile posters, like this one, take, you know, with the Mattel, see the Mattel logo mm -hmm. uh, for Ryan Gosling's Ken. So of course, executive producer Jeff had to make us oh. into these. So <laughs> here we go. Here's mine, uh, yeah. Influencer, influential, influencer. Uh, next is Kendall. This Barbie. Now look. Okay, what's scary is that looks real. That looks real. Uh, her tagline is this Barbie is a camper. Uh, get ready to be scared. Get the kids away from the TV. Yeah. That is, uh, that's producer Ted. His uh, picture, uh, alter ego, Ricky Ticky Tavi, and his tagline is, this Barbie is a coach. That's right. <laughs> and finally, executive producer Jeff. <laughs> and it, that's his natural state right there. Uh, this Barbie is a mood. This Barbie is a mood, yeah. Bravo. I think those are all pretty representative of all of us. It's true. It's really true. Actually. God, you're beautiful. Oh, that's you a are just beautiful. Picture. 
Thanks, Kimberly, and the team who does those pictures. Girl, that not an inch of that is. Stop oh, saying thanks, Kimberly. I'm that is you. That's how you look. And my shirt's not big enough to whatever, hide inside whatever. of it. So <laughs> yeah. Next in the dish, the the director of the live action remake of The Little Mermaid had his sights set on Harry Styles playing the role of Prince Eric. Remember, I I think we heard this a while ago, but unfortunately, the movie was not the kind of genre that that. Oh my goodness, a phone going off no, now. did you see who it was? It's fine. It was photographer, was that photographer Eric? <laughs> this, Leo, this is the best audience uh, of the year. Now, now, I bet before the show is over, I mark my word, I'm, let's lay down some money. Uh -huh. Before this show is over, an audience member secretly has a dog in one of their bags. I'm telling you. One of those small I'm telling you. We're going to hear a dog barking before the end of the show. <laughs> so anyway, what the hell were we talking about? Oh, this. <laughs> So uh, Prince, or not Prince Harry, Harry Styles was going to, they wanted him for The Little Mermaid. Not to be confused with. So why are we even trying to continue with this? But Harry Styles was like, no, I don't want to be in The Little Mermaid. When the director met with Harry to pitch him the part, Harry told him he wanted to go in a different direction. He, Harry wants to take on darker films. He also wanted to stay away from musicals as he tried to make the jump from pop star to actor. I kind of get that. But the director noted that Harry was a lovely guy. Mm. I think, mm -hmm. look, you can do what you want to do with your career. Obviously, yeah. I would have liked to have seen uh, Harry Styles as Prince Eric. When that, when that rumor was going around several months ago, everybody was excited. It was like Halle Bailey and Harry was going to be perfect. And then I kind of forgot about it until the story came back out. Because he kind of looks like a cartoon character. And he that's, does. And I, I mean that in a good way. No, so he does. perfectly I mean, drawn. He's, I, he's a beautiful man. Yes. He's got a great voice. Beautiful woman, beautiful mm -hmm. man. Right. We have a lot more to come and a lot more phone ringing when we come back. <laughs> back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to Rewarding Bad Behavior. <laughs> Can we lock the doors and make sure this audience never leaves, Brad? Just lock the door and let's just keep them. But, yeah. Oh, crap. We got to feed them then, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I think we think. One of the things you probably like about our show is that we never do politics. This is an escape of, yeah, we don't do, yeah. Uh, but this is, this is news adjacent. This is funny, trust me. If you watched any cable news yesterday, you know what was happening. And The Daily Show noticed that the anchors <laughs> might have started to run out of things to say. And that is our Late Night Rewind. see some of the traffic heading northbound mm -hmm. uh, there and I'm not sure I'm not I can't remember off the top of my head if Fifth, Fifth Avenue is one way yes. right it's northbound I think to go south go south so that's not Fifth Avenue I checked ways <laughs> just before we came in it showed that that was the fastest route we expect him to enter through us and I think that was just him John and Jillian did you guys just see the former president walk out or is that just me there's Donald Trump right there I'm sorry Abby we just saw Donald Trump overhearing some radio traffic here at any moment now see the former president walk through those doors so there there are many many doors into the courtroom and it's not just this one door there are side doors and there's a back door photographer Evan Shumrak laser focused on that uh, front door and many hallways that lead to each door if he does go through those doors he will come by the camera a judge comes in a different door a jury comes in even an, another door a defendant who's incarcerated comes in a different door the public comes in the main door so there are many doors okay. Okay, okay, so let me get this straight. You're telling me the courthouse has multiple doors <laughs> and different people come through different doors and then those doors connect to other doors and then those are all the doors. <laughs> hey, man, I'm learning so much about the legal system. Thank you, cable news. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. 
That's uh, that's called, uh, guest host Roy Wood Jr. Look, I always, I always look. We're a part of the media, so I all, you know, I we we take our take our beatings, and sometimes we deserve it. We deserve it right oh, there. That's, that's ridiculous. Funny. There's a lot of other. They could have went to another different story and come back. There's hallways that go to the doorways, doorways, and there's other doorways, and the judge comes in a different doorway. Oh god, that was so good. <laughs> the Daily Show's just been on fire lately. Oh. Uh, well, next in the dish, the Jason Show. Uh, Jason Show research team has been busy watching the latest season of Love Is Blind, and now Netflix made a big announcement concerning the reunion. Look at this. We have a lot to discuss. Are you guys ready for a Love is Blind reunion spoiler? Spoiler alert! There are no spoilers. That's right. We actually have no idea what's going to go down at this reunion. You know why? Because we're doing it live. That's right, the first live reunion in the history of Netflix. That means anything could happen. Literally anything. And when it does, we will be just as shocked as you are. Ooh. Hey, Row 2, are you watching that show? No. <laughs> Just, she, just you, oh God! <laughs> what are you watching? I don't know stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I couldn't love this audience more. <laughs> Netflix uh, once again dipping into its toe into live programming. The final episodes are expected to drop later this week, and that live reunion will air on Sunday, April sixteenth at seven. Art Seven Central. Who? Are, are you watching? No. No, I know. I always I forget that you. I forgot that you don't like. This I can show. only handle one love show at a time, and The Bachelor's enough. It's yeah. enough for me. Ted is loving. Ted said that this is a great season of Love Is Blind. Okay, but Ted watches like literally every crappy love show. Ever. You're right. You're right. Ted, it, it's not a good barometer for that. I mean, but yeah. Sorry, Ted. Sorry, Ted. Mm -hmm. Next in the dish, Brooke Shields was on, was on with Howard Stern yesterday. Uh, great. I got to listen to the rest of the interview. He, again, another great one by Stern. She talked about a date that she had with JFK Jr., a man that she had idolized since she was a kid. Listen to this. I was oh. invited with the family. Um, he kept saying I looked like his mother, which was really interesting and a, a compliment, <laughs> you don't but it was that. also like, I don't know how to feel about this. And then we did have a real date and I wouldn't sleep with him um, be, because I just, I kind of loved him too much. Leave Saw him up. on the next day on the slope and he didn't look at me and he didn't talk to me. And on the one hand, I was like, on the other hand, I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God, because right. he still might not have talked to you, even if you had, and you would have given something that he wouldn't have under, like cared about. It was, uh, <laughs> she talked about a lot. She talked about a relationship that she had with Dean Kane, Superman. And I, I can't, the documentary that she's out promoting is called Pretty Baby, streaming now on Hulu. And look, I was a kid in the 80s, so I, you know, the I didn't process what was happening to her, mm -hmm. but the way that her image was just so sexualized. Right. Looking at it through the lenses of 2023, mm -hmm. it's, uh, and her, they, she received so much fan mail that her mother, uh, who famously was very protective, would put the fan mail in categories, in, 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 in things, prison, Prison mm -hmm. letters, mm -hmm. creeps, mm -hmm. potential people, and just normal, like normal everyday fans. Right. Uh, and even even the creepers, she would respond to. She said that everybody. She was. Brooke said that her mother was adamant about responding to everybody, um, even the creepy Carls. Yeah. I mean, newsflash: you don't have to respond to the creepy people. I'm no, just gonna no, throw yeah, that out there. I know. I, I do, but that's just me, though. But that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, when I was single, I was like, okay, you know. <laughs> Maybe you're not that weird. I, mean, you know, I don't know. 
maybe you're fine. You know, you it's cool. Redeeming quality. <laughs> Next on the dish, fans of TGIF are having a moment right now, like Kendall's generation uh, and a little bit older. After the cast of Boy Meets World reunited over the weekend for Mr. Feeney's birthday, William Daniels, Bill Daniels, who played the principal slash teen, uh, teacher on Boy Meets World, turned 96. Uh, Ryder oh, Strong. Ryder Strong, who played Sean Hunter, was there along with the actors uh, Topanga, Eric, and Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. A notable absence, though, was Ben Savage, who played uh, Corey. Why was he not there? Well, because he's busy running for Congress in California. But what's funny is this is a generational mm -hmm. kind of um, separation. You know what I'm going to say. I know William, you know William Daniels mm -hmm. from Boy Meets World. Mr. Feeney. Mm -hmm. I know William Daniels from St. Elsewhere. Uh, that's what I think yeah. of. I, yeah, it was a great, great medical show uh, with Denzel Washington. Howie, oh yeah, Denzel, Wa Howie Mandel was on that show. It was great. Mm. I was on NBC. I loved Boy Meets World. It was like, I mean, everyone my age, like, yeah, that was, it. you watched that show. Every girl wanted to be Topanga. Every boy wanted to be in love with Topanga. I was on Team Sean. You know, you liked Sean or Corey. Oh, kind of like Dawson's Creek. You were either yeah. Dawson or Pacey. Yeah. And he would do this with his hair, and I was like, ah, oh, smooth. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we had those. Uh -huh. We had those, yeah. Next in the dish, more episodes of Carpool Karaoke are coming to Apple TV+. Plus. So if you don't know, this is not the, the, the segment. This is the spinoff series from The Late Late Show, and they dropped a teaser. Let's look at that. Hey, your Space Ghost fan. I'm a closet Spice Girls fan. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Make it last forever. Friendship never ends. It's like rain. I am a wedding day. A thousand kisses from you. Never too, never too much. Never too much. Never too much. Sweet understanding. of ghosts I love ghosts I love that show it's probably one of the only network shows that I just I love it anyway the new episodes are available on Apple TV plus I wasn't sure about that show right because I thought how without Corden mm -hmm. is it what's but the key that's mm -hmm. joyous like that's I like that and I want to get in that car with Leah Michelle and Darren Chris and just like Bask Take it in. in the beauty of the music. I yes. saw Snoop in there. I would like to get in the Snoop one. You'd be feeling real good if you I'd got in feel, that car. I'd be real relaxed after that car ride. Woo. Just well, saying. Hops. That's right. <laughs> Next in the dish, uh, we're now learning more about Barbara Walters' exit from The View back in 2014. Why? Well, here's the deal. In a new interview, her friend and former colleague, Lisa Ling, I loved when Lisa was on The View, yes. uh, revealed that Barbara told her that she was being actually forced out of The View. She was being forced out of her seat on the show by ABC. Lisa uh, came, was a co-host at the time, uh, no, uh, yeah, and says she's never shared that tidbit about Barbara. Despite Barbara's feelings of being pushed out, the show still gave her a grand farewell, bringing out the biggest names in the news business uh, to bid her a farewell. Everybody, Oprah, Katie Couric, Robin Roberts, Connie Chung, D Deborah Norville, Deborah Roberts, everybody came out. The but, King of England. And I think if I got that story, because Lisa wasn't, the co wasn't a co-host at the time that Barbara left. She had been gone for a while. I think Barbara whispered that to her as Lisa walked her out. Oh, um, like or she didn't want to leave. Yeah, and Barbara was like, by the way, mm -hmm. I'm not leaving I'm by smiling, my... I'm smiling, but... But let's be... Uh, let me be fair. I, you know, it was time... I think the show... It was time for the show to evolve. Mm -hmm. And it was time... You know, it, ABC was probably looking at various things. Uh, but look... It is tacky to push out the woman that created the created show in the first the place. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a little tacarama. Right. And you see that, and you see that in TV a lot, mostly in TV, but you see it in everything. And it, it, it is just depressing because this person put their whole life into it. I'm like, oh yeah, so you're just getting a little old. We're just gonna refresh. But oh, I guess the reason is, it's, but. It doesn't surprise me. The TV no. business is very rough. It I've seen anchors. Is. I've seen anchors in local news situations yep. where 
you know, the, the network, the, ratings. the network, uh, Volen tells you to leave. You know what I mean? It's just like, I think you should succeed someplace else. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's time to meet today's JVIP. Today it's Heather Oakland from Manda, North Dakota. She says she loves how we're all truly ourselves, along with being down to earth and appreciating everyone and everything. Heather also loves the enthusiasm and chemistry between Kendall and I. Well, Heather gets a Jason Shum mug and has entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. More ahead. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Coming up, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Viola Davis, Michael Jordan. Yep, we saw air last night, and we'll tell you if you should, well, just do it or just see it. And looking for a good spring break read? Kendall is back with her latest book club picks. That and more when we return. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's a movie about the creation of a shoe, but wow, it is actually so much more than that. Now, if I just say that, it doesn't sound too interesting, but this shoe is the Air Jordan, which would go on to change one company and, well, sports forever and still make uh, an impact on the world to this day. So as I said at the top of the show last night, Kendall and I got a chance to see a sneak preview of Ben Affleck's new movie, Air. Now, before we share our review, here's a look at the movie. My name's Sonny Vaccaro, I'm with Nike. Do you typically make it a habit of showing up at people's front doors unannounced? I don't like to take no for an answer. Oh, man, here we go. You ask me what I do here, this is what I do. I find you players, and I feel it this time. Yeah, okay, it's risky. When you were selling sneakers out of the back of your Plymouth, that was risky. Don't change that now. For a rookie? Yes. Who's never set foot on an NBA court. Yeah, that's the literal definition of rookie, yeah. What's the plan? We build a shoe line around just him. I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. I'm, uh... I am just gonna cut right to the chase. I absolutely love this movie. Like, love, capital L, love this movie. And let me let me tell you why, and then I can't wait to hear from my buddy here. Um, everything about it uh, is it, they do well. First, the story. I get, I kept thinking to myself. This is just a great story to tell. It is a story about perseverance. It is a story about uh, dreamers that go. You know what? Research says this. Um, uh, luck. You know. Uh, forget all of that. We're gonna follow our gut and go with. X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. I love stories like that. Uh, next, the writing is snappy. It's funny. Um, it, it, there's like a dynamic between the cast that's just crackling, especially Bateman, Jason Bateman right there and, and Matt Damon. They all play guys at Nike. And, uh, and then the, uh, the, the acting, Viola Davis as Michael Jordan's mom is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Damon as Sonny who uh, basically, as you saw in the clip there, is bound and determined to make this deal with Jordan. And Michael, even though he's a young player, wants nothing to do with Nike because <laughs> Nike was the lame shoe. I know, I grew up in this era. Everybody wanted to wear Adidas, including MJ. Nobody wanted to touch Nike. I'm not gonna say anything more about the story because if you don't know it as it unfolds, it's just joyous, but air hits air and never comes back down. I mean, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It was so good. I I went into it. I I mean, I'm a basketball fan. I love all the actors that are in the movie, so I was just mostly curious. My husband's a huge Michael Jordan fan because he's from the Chicagoland area, so he grew up watching Yeah, Jordan him, and I right? are both from, yeah. So this was mostly why we went. I left on the same thing. One, it was quick. It wasn't a really long movie, which is so nice. Now, I feel like every movie you go to is like three hours. This yeah. was a nice hour and a half. You're right. But I wanted to read more about the story after I left, which I think is a good thing. It speaks to just how interesting of a piece it was that you're like, I want to kind of know. So how long did it take them to develop the rest of the shoes? And they give a little bit more information at the end. And I liked Michael's 
role in it. Because I know we talked about this, how people asked him, hey, Ben Affleck, why don't you have somebody playing Michael? It's a shoe, it's a movie about his shoe. And he said, I didn't want it to distract from the plot line because you all know who he is. You know who Michael Jordan is. Um, and he's in it, but he's not. And it doesn't distract, it doesn't take away from it. He, they do a really, really good job with that, I thought. It's, it, it is feel good. Mm -hmm. It is, like I said, a, a, a great story. They do the 80s very well. Yes. Um, you know, there's a, a Wonder Woman 84 came out a couple years ago, and they never really embraced the 80s. This movie embraces the 80s, the culture. You feel like you're in 84 when this happened. You feel like you're in this meeting. And, you know, if you've ever been told by a boss, oh, Let's not do that, but you just have a gut feeling and you go for it. You will identify with Sonny's character, Matt Damon. Mm -hmm. If you're a mother who believes in her kid more than anybody else, you'll identify with with uh, Mrs. Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll identify with Viola Davis uh, and Ben Affleck as as, as uh, the, the Phil Knight, uh, Phil Knight mm -hmm. the founder of Nike. He's a reverent and just a goofy guy and a good guy and. Uh, I can't, there isn't a bad thing about this movie. I no. really can't think of a net negative about it. No, and there were two moments when the audience that we, I mean, it was a full pack theater that they laughed and were like, oh, audibly, that was at the gas station I that Sonny goes to, which the 80s references are galore in that. And then when Viola Davis's character, Mrs. Jordan's talking about what her son deserves, there were people audibly like, yes, 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 and yeah. clapping her along. It was really cool. This doesn't give anything away because Y'all know Michael Jordan, but uh, Shock. but Viola Davis, the line Kendall's referring to is something like around this. She said to the Sonny, Matt Damon, she goes, a shoe is just a shoe until my son wears it. Mm -hmm. And the whole the whole audience Sounded like, like that. that. It was <laughs> go see it. Go. It hits theaters today. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Air. Great movie. Yeah. So darn good. We're going to take a break a little bit later. I'm heading into the audience. Uh, and well, <laughs> say a prayer. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, OK, say the morning prayer. Here we go. I, uh, I, I say this whenever we come into the audience. It's one of the best things about doing this show. It's what we wanted to do when we pitched the show, uh, have a daily studio audience. And it's folks like these that make, oh, it's like, yeah, it's like Michael, it's like the Nike story. We, we didn't listen to the executives. We said, we want people every day, and then here they are. So we're gonna go into the audience. One of my favorite things to do, because everyone needs to let off a little bit of steam now and then, is uh, a, a thing that we call what's driving you crazy. The little things in life, whether it's the woman at the grocery store, uh, people that walk slow, uh, whatever it is, <laughs> it's those little things in life that just drive you crazy. So let's start, where is Aubrey? Hi, give it up for Aubrey, everybody. Come, come over here, my love. Come right here. How you doing, Aubrey? I say it, Benny, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> So handsome. Oh, you're so beautiful. Okay, I like you. What's what's driving you crazy, my love? Drivers that don't know how to use the roundabouts that they've put in in Scott oh, County. You've made a lot of friends, they, I, right? They can't. They stop. They don't know how to merge. <laughs> okay, are you with me on this one too? Uh, people that uh, get in the left lane and they go 10 miles an hour and you can't pass. And they can't let anybody merge in either. No, no the people do not know how to merge. <laughs> period in Minnesota. No, period. And the roundabouts has made it worse. Yes, that's a good one. Give it up for Aubrey. Thank you, love. Look it up. Did you see Aubrey? Did you see Aub Aubrey had a goodbye wave? She's like, bye everybody. Oh Lord. Is this right? I have to go to her next? Give it up for Jackie O, everybody. Come here, Jackie O, come here. Come here, my. You get her in the picture, this lady right now. Okay, well, she's, she's been on TV enough, believe me. Uh, Lynn, what's driving you crazy? I have this cute little five-year-old five, five year old Maltese. He's, my husband got me this dog five years ago. His name's Motley, and he growls at me every time I kiss him. <laughs> And he picked the right name, Motley. 
Motley Crue, man. <laughs> I have nothing. I can't add to that. I don't. What, what am I supposed to add to that? I can't. I love you. I love you. She's the troublemaker. I know. I believe me. I didn't do anything. I know. Yeah, I just. Uh, where's Terry? Right here. Come here, Terry. Come on, give it here. I'll come up here. Just come right over here. What's driving you crazy, sweetie? Now I have a dog too. Yeah, uh, is the name new... is the name White Snake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Axel. He's Axel. I have Ar what? <laughs> As in Rose? <laughs> Axel and Archer. Axel's a new puppy, oh, six months old, okay. and he's just driving me nuts. Really, the puppy is. So much is? energy. Yeah, and he drives Archer crazy. Archer's three, but I got him as a brother, you know, so they can hang out and play and. You know, I just what is up? Anybody else have a dog named after an '80s rock band? Anybody else? Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Where's um, where's Monica? Where's oh Monica? Let me. <laughs> What's driving you crazy, Monica? Uh, have you driven outside lately with the potholes? I, I know. Oh, believe me, yeah. I gotta tell you, I know it's just one city. We had Mayor Fry in here. He was here for a different reason, and he, we had him as a captive audience, and we we all just. Uh, yelled at him for about 20 <laughs> minutes. Fix these potholes. I mean, I'm only 5'2". I can't even walk down my street. I might fall in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that joke. <laughs> OK, I'm going to give you one for me. And I think you'll be with me on this one. And that is um, people that look at a menu board, and like fast food, Starbucks, whatever, and they look at the menu board and they have 20 minutes to look at the menu board. And then they get up to the counter and they still don't know what they want. They still don't. They've had 20 minutes in line to look at what they want and they get up there and they still don't know what they want. I want, I want to scream at them at the back. You've had 30 minutes to look at the menu. As we go to break, uh, audience selfie shots from this weekend. Don't forget to sign up to be a part of the audience. Head to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. We will be back after this. Welcome back. Uh, one is the inspiration for a much talked about new series on Amazon Prime, uh, a Prime Video. Another is the basis for a new drama series on Apple TV Plus. Kendall and her mom are back with another book club featuring books adapted for Hollywood. Look. We are at Next Chapter Booksellers in St. Paul. Book club is back. Mom and I are like very awkwardly holding our books right now. <laughs> We're trying to sit up straight so we have proper posture. Yes. And we've already been shopping for 20 minutes. But hey, time to talk about books we've already read. That's fine. That's right. Um, a little bit of a theme this week. We have two books that are turning into or have turned into shows recently. And we thought you should read the book before you check out the show because they're going to be pretty popular. Um, I'm going to go. You want to go first? Sure. I'll you go first. So my book is called The Last Thing He Told Her. It's by Laura Dave, as you can see. We are introduced to Hannah Hill, who is blissfully happy. She's been married for a year to the man of her dreams, mm -hmm. or so she thinks. Okay. But then the man of her dreams disappears. Always. Without a trace. Always. And one of his students knocks on her door the same day he, she hasn't heard from him, and she gets this little note, and it says two words, protect her. So she's sent into the spiral of what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Who am I supposed to protect? And she figures out, oh, it can only be one person, his daughter Bailey, her now stepdaughter. Okay. Well, Bailey's mother died tragically when Bailey was a very young child. So she's so, like all she has now. Yes. So it's just the two of them now. But Bailey is a little unhappy with Hannah because she has, you know, interfered with her relationship with her father. Mm -hmm. And now she's intruded, whatever. So they have a rocky relationship. But now, as you said, it's only the two of them. And they take off on this crazy, twisty, turny, mind-boggling journey to try to figure out what happened to Owen, the husband and father. They do find out pretty quickly that he is not who he said he was. And so it's an action-packed book. Mm -hmm. um, there's an emotional punch to it. 
And what's really interesting is that Jennifer Garner will be starring in this on Apple TV starting in April. They have a limited time series, so. So starting this month, there's gonna be, oh cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it must be pretty good. Yeah, so. I like it. Yeah. Um, my book, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Everybody loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo that we talked about yes. a little bit ago. Same author, but a very different style book. This is Daisy Jones and the Six. You may have heard of it because it came up on your Amazon Prime to watch. It's a show that's currently on. You can currently watch it. I've been watching it, plus I'd already read the book, so it's been kind of fun going back and forth, and I definitely think you should read it first. Uh, this was actually inspired by Taylor Jenkins Reid, the author, going to a Fleetwood Mac concert, am I right? Yes, correct. Where she she, uh, my mom read into this even more than I did, where she saw, uh, at the time, Stevie Nicks and who was the guy? Lindsay Buckingham. Lindsay Buckingham and their chemistry or non-chemistry on stage mm -hmm. and realizing that the songs were that they'd written were about each other, the breakup of the band, etc. So this is a fictional telling of what if that was this band. The way it's written is what's really different about it. She writes it like it's interviews over the decades. So she opens with, this is the first time the band, that was the number one band at the time in the 70s, are talking about what really happened. And each person throughout kind of talks in their own voice. So you see no chapter is written by a single person. It's all broken up into different opinions. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're telling one your version and then someone else tells theirs, it takes a second to get used to but I definitely would do that. It really is about the band. It's about a love triangle between this fictional Billy Dunn, his wife, Camilla, and then of course, Daisy Jones, our Stevie Nicks. Uh, really, really good. Watch the show, read the book, get the book somewhere else, not at Amazon. Um, <laughs> but I like the book better, personally. Uh, we're gonna browse some more because there's, oh, we've already talked about one whole shelf. I think we wanna read, so. Uh, Thank you, and uh, check out these books. Come to my bookstore. Happy reading. Support your local bookstore. Yep. Uh, my uh, gal pal, Lisa LaCourcier, mm -hmm. is with you. Loved the book yep. on the TV show. I, I liked the show, and now that I've watched the whole show, it's very different than the book. Um, yeah, Daisy so, Jones, I mean. Daisy, Daisy Jones. Jones. Yeah, Daisy Jones and the Six. I, I preferred the book as well. It just is a much more believable, warm story that you, you want the protagonist to win, if that makes sense. It does. It does. You have a third book, too, that's a Dude. web exclusive. Web exclusive, because right. we talk too much. Yeah. Um, OK, I brought my phone because it's a very long title. If you've read both of those, since they are a little more popular books, we have a third one. It's older. It's called The All-Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion. What you need to know is it's by Fanny Flagg. She wrote the book. Fried Green Tomatoes! Yes, she wrote the book uh, that inspired the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. So Fanny Flag, it's about, it's a historical fiction like she does. A woman that was adopted uh, finds who her birth mother was, and the story of her birth mother is so cool. It's about a World War II pilot who's a woman, which just did not happen. She's from Wisconsin, which is kind of fun if you live locally. You kind of recognize some of the names of the towns and stuff, but Fanny, yes, by Fanny Flag. I Flagg. love Fanny Flag. Yes, the all girls filling station's last reunion. And it's that great. sounds. So that cool. sounds like a very Fanny Flag uh, so reunion. Long, yes. She's also really funny on old Match Game episodes. Um, if you missed anything on uh, the book recommendations and want to hear about the third book, like I said, head to our Facebook or YouTube pages. Just search for Jason Show TV. Bless you. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Some more. I see somebody wearing one of our sweatshirts. I love that. So I love that. I love our sweatshirts so much. We have new stuff coming for the summer. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Well, since you don't watch The View, because in many cities it's on against us, uh, you may have missed this. There's something new at the table with the host of the show. Not a new co host, but coasters. Get this the show had to add coasters because when people drag mugs on their table, it sounded like someone was tooting. Recently, <laughs> recently, white coasters showed up beneath all of the co host mugs. So the tootin' problem solved. Oh, there we go. We'll be right back. Back after this. <laughs> Show. 
It is time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in this segment until I read it live for the first time right now. Today, a reminder for parents to take a close look at what your kids are doing when they use your phone. A mom in Massachusetts thought her five year old daughter was playing games, but it turns out her five year old daughter was shopping on Amazon. Uh, the five year old ended up spending $4,000 ordering dirt bikes and women's footwear. Uh, luckily, Amazon agreed to refund her for all the items, calling it a teachable moment. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, I had a teachable moment when I was a teenager, uh, when you used to have to pay more for uh, long distance calls. Uh -oh. I, I would call the set of Dallas and ask for publicity <laughs> photos. And I would act like I was from a newspaper. I'd go, hi, can I get a picture of Larry Hagman? This is from the Michigan City newspaper. Um, I racked up $400 in long distance, yeah. So my mom grounded me from watching Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, producer Ted and I discuss the show we call Hot Mom Manor. That's tomorrow. But right now, that's going to do it for us. Happy birthday, Kyle. I love you. Go out there and be yourself. Bye, everybody.